Hello and welcome to the Academy of Modern Martial Arts and our step-by-step -step Tai Chi instruction. Today we're going to take a look at movement number 11 of the 24 movement form, single whip. As I'm sure you recall, single whip is a movement that bookends wave hands like clouds. So we go from single whip into wave hands like clouds and we transition back into single whip. So today we're just going to do that entire sequence as a whole, focusing on that final transition into the second single whip. Being seated in place, sinking down into the left foot on the left side of the body, relaxing the upper carriage, and ensuring that our arms are at what we would consider a relatively natural turnout. If uh, we're looking dead on on the camera, we tend to see that the lead hand is somewhere along the line of the lead leg, whereas the right arm in this particular case is about 45 degrees or our natural turnout. If we try to pull that right arm all the way back, we put quite a bit of strain and load on the shoulder, and we tend to collapse our chest as we get too close to the center line. So where does that crane's beak hang out and just sort of set? If we're using too much energy, you'll be able to feel the tension in your right shoulder. So as we move back and forth, where does that right arm just sort of relax into place and we lose some of the tone necessary to hold that arm up? And then the same thing would be true here for the left arm. Uh, turned out, set in, sunk down into that elbow, sinking down into the lead portion of that wrist. And again, that should just sort of reside there nice and calm. And also lifting up out of that carriage, making certain that our, our frame is suspended um, and our arms will hang very differently when our shoulders are in place. So if we allow our chest to become concave, where the arms want to be is very different than where your arms tend to sit when the shoulders are back where they go and our head is nice and upright. So once more, we'll settle into single whip. <clears throat> Number one, we'll rock back into the right leg, emptying the left for wave hands like clouds, stepping up bringing that right leg over, stepping out again for wave hands like clouds number two, once more for wave hands like clouds number three, and then here we are from the third wave hands like clouds. We notice that as the right hand passed over, the left begins to come up, and we're going to bring our hands remarkably close to where they were before. We're going to create that crane's beak as it is over the left palm, and we're going to rotate and turn out and again open through that chest or keep that chest nice and open as we settle down into high single whip. Since we've already done single whip, let's just really focus on what we're doing with our upper carriage because again in this movement when we are bringing our arms up we're invited to sort of collapse and what we want to be able to do is maintain that lift throughout our sternum. So if we looked at it sideways and we say that we just finished or we're stepping into wave hands like clouds number three so we're about to turn out into our second single whip we're going to bring that left hand up we're going to create the crane's beak with the right we're going to almost hide it behind there and as our arms come up and out in front we're also going to lift through the elbows we're going to keep the chest open and we're going to step out emptying that left leg, setting the heel on the ground, and sinking down into that left elbow and into the heel or the edge of, of that left palm. When we're done, we're going to notice that we have width in our stance. We're never lined up on a tightrope in Tai Chi. We always have some lateral stability. And so one more time, let's take a look at that again. We'll assume we're just now stepping into wave hands like clouds number three, bringing the right foot up, crossing those hands over, creating that crane's beak, lifting up, coming out, stepping over, and again, settling down and into that left side while keeping that gentle arc through the right arm. Here we are. Single whip number two. Looking at it straight on, let's take a moment and just sort of, again, bring our hands, uh, our right hand over our left palm. We're going to create that crane's beak, and we're going to notice uh, we want to try and rotate to the outside and put that arm up, 
without bending this angle or creating an, an acute angle in our right elbow or in our left elbow for that matter. So as the hands come over, as the right hand comes over that left, we're going to rotate. And as we rotate, we're also going to lift up through the palms. We're gonna keep the shoulders set back and down and the arms are going to turn out into their respective position and set through the frame. So again, without a step, the left comes underneath the right, the right comes over the left, the right creates the crane's peak, they begin to rotate and lift in concert, bringing and staying open in the, both in the angle of the elbows and in the chest, they come out and down, settling into place. One more time, cross, crane's beak, rotate and lift, stay open through the chest and settle into place. The footwork for single whip is relatively easy. We had just finished wave hands like clouds number three. So just taking a look at that footwork, we brought the left foot forward. We move the weight over the left. We bring the empty right up and we set down into that right leg. We're gonna shift the weight into the right. And as we sink down into the right, again, we come out of that left. We empty that left leg. We're going to stay open through the torso and the hip. And we're just going to turn. As we turn, there's an amount of turn that we can do keeping uh, our right knee aligned. So we just turn and open that up, set the heel down, and again, sink in. As we sink into place, we're gonna unweight the right toes and we're gonna allow those right toes to come over and line back up. One more time. From having finished the third wave hands like clouds, sinking down into that right leg, emptying the left leg, bringing it up, stepping out as the hands are coming out, we're opening up, setting that heel in place and sinking into position as we move forward. From there, we unweight the right toes, or, or another way of thinking of unweighting the right toes is really sinking down to the inside of that right heel and allowing the hip and the toes to turn forward. Again, if we're gonna start facing in this direction, and I want my hips facing in the direction that we're going, it puts a lot of strain on the knee if we're gonna leave the knee out here while turning in this direction. So we wanna be able to sink back into that heel and allow that foot to roll over with us until it's about at a 45 in support of our hips turned here toward our left. Thanks so much for joining us again, and we hope that you enjoyed yourself and found something valuable along the way. If you like our videos, feel free to subscribe and let us know how we can best serve you at home. Until we see you next time, take care.